Hi guys, it is a gorgeous spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, here it's a Sunday afternoon, March 29th, 2020, and uh, I'm just sitting here. The, the only human being in the United States having an open house today. Yes, uh, actually I've had two people show up, so wish me luck. So I'm getting six hours to catch up on uh, some YouTube videos, and uh, finally... Chris Hedges has surfaced. Uh, you know, Chris Hedges, I guess he, as he mentions in this video, he he did admit that he is done at Truth Dig, that uh, he is unemployed, and Truth Dig has been shut down. Uh, you can find that in this video. So anyway, this is an hour and 22-minute video with... Uh, Extinction Rebellion's uh, Robert Hallam. Is that his last name? Hallam, anyway. Ro Roger Hallam. I hope I got that right, Roger. So, anyway, uh, this is Roger interviewing Chris Hedges. Uh, and the name of this video, this hour and 22-minute video, is Chris Hedges on Coronavirus Climate and What Next? The, the problem here, I mean, for people interested in the coronavirus, is that approximately maybe eight minutes of the hour, of the hour, what is that, 82 minutes, maybe eight minutes of the 82 minutes have anything to do with coronavirus. Now, it's an excellent, it's an excellent video. I mean, it's Chris just talking about his views on life and what's next but it uh, so it's a very good collapse chronicles uh, type interview but it is not much in the coronavirus uh, chronicles but anyway here is about a I'm gonna put the link on here and encourage you to listen to the whole interview because it's worth your time but here is a three-minute excerpt of Chris Hedges actually talking about the coronavirus and the knock-on effects and what you can expect uh, to see in the good old USA, at least, over the next few weeks or months. So take it away. Take it away, Chris, if I can find the thing to get you going. Chris Hedges, take it away. But certainly in the United States, we're headed to a very kind of frightening uh, corporate totalitarianism. And we have created both legally and physically the mechanisms to put that, in essence, totalitarian system in place uh, in our deindustrialized urban pockets where poor people of color live. Uh, where there is no work, and the only work you can get is in the illegal economy, which pushes you right into the uh, prison system, uh, the jails and prison. Uh, we have militarized police. By that, I mean police who are issued military-grade weapons. That's long-barreled weapons, Kevlar, vests, uh, armored personnel carriers. If you watched the riots in Ferguson, you saw it, or the uprising in Ferguson. You saw that equipment and with 50 caliber machine guns mounted on top, uh, you know, aimed at unarmed uh, protesters in the streets. Uh, that, that can, with a flip of a switch, can be used throughout the whole country. And we've created legal mechanisms, uh, largely through terrorism laws, which have been used uh, quite uh, ruthlessly against Muslim activists in the country since 9-11 to strip you of habeas corpus due process, even impose secret trials where... Uh, defendants are not allowed to see or uh, including their lawyers the evidence that's being used against them so it's all there it's all ready to go hannah Arendt writes about this in origins of totalitarianism where she warns and she herself of course after spending three weeks imprisoned by the gestapo is expelled from germany and, and stripped of her citizenship so she's undocumented in french she's stateless and she writes about the phenomena of being stateless and she said once rights become privileges once the state has the ability to strip you of your protections as a citizen, then everyone can be stripped of those rights, which, are, of course, is what Germany ultimately did. 
So I think, you know, as Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. There are lessons of the past um, that, uh, you know, we should heed. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very worried. I mean, on a personal level, I'm worried for my children, uh, but I'm also worried for where the United States potentially is headed. There you go. I'm worried for my children, but I'm also very worried where the United States is potentially headed. Uh, and, you know, the coronavirus and the, the effects of it. Uh, yes, we will all find out, Chris. This is Chris Hedges. Uh, if you're not familiar with Chris, just so you understand this, Chris is not a right-wing wacko conspiracy theorist. He is a, uh, a former editor of the good old New York Times and so on and so forth. And anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that little snippet. And if you want to hear the rest of the interview, I will put the link on there. But don't expect an hour and 20 minutes talking about coronavirus. Anyway, I got to uh, fire up the barbecue to grill some chicken on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And I suggest you get out there on this beautiful spring Sunday afternoon and barbecue some chicken to eat all by yourself while you still can. Happy social isolation, my guys. Yeah.